the New Zealand used car market is now littered with these. Yep, low mileage used Tesla Model 3s. The question is, how do you find a good one? Yep, the market is now full of Tesla Model 3s. And the reason for that largely is because a lot of buyers went out and bought these when they came out. And then, now that the Tesla Model Y is available, they've upgraded to that. And it means the market is now full of these. And personally, I prefer the Model 3 because I think it looks better, but each to their own. The question is, how do you find a good one and what flaws should you look for? Well, that's the point of this video. And this is a great example, this car, because it is a 2021 Model 3. It's done almost 33,000 kilometers and it's been used properly. It's not been pampered, it's not a pavement princess, it's been used hard every day for hauling kids, it's been towing boats and towing rubbish, it was used in the Cyclone Gabriel cleanup. This thing is worked hard and tirelessly, it's not been given an easy life. So I'm going to take a good look at all the wear and tear this vehicle's had in this video, starting with the battery. Yes, of course the battery is going to be your biggest consideration when buying a used Tesla and there are three ways to get an idea of its health. The first option is to go into service mode and do a battery health test, but because this menu is for service techs only, officially I can't recommend you go in there and do it yourself, but it is very accurate. The next option is to use a third party app like Tessie, which users report is fairly accurate, but it's a subscription service and costs about five US bucks a month. The third option is not scientific, but everyone uses it and it's just charging the car to full, then looking at how far it can go. If the range meter says above 400k is on a charge, then the battery's likely A-OK, -okay, but this figure is an indication based on gentle driving. Question is, what's a normal level of degradation? Well, in a car like this, that's done 33,000 Ks and is two and a half years old, I'd expect the battery in this to be somewhere around 92% health. And you might be thinking, well, that's, that's lost 8% in just two and a half years. That sounds like a lot. Don't worry, degradation isn't linear. In the first six months of a new Tesla Model 3, you can expect to lose about 5% in that first six months. But after that, it tapers right off. In fact, it's common to see cars that do 320,000 Ks and yet still only have 10, 12% degradation. Batteries in these last quite a long time. If you still have concerns, I wouldn't worry too much at this point because according to a tweet from Mr. Musk himself, the batteries in the Tesla Model 3s and the Tesla Model Ys are both designed to last around 1500 full charging cycles. Now in English, that works out to be almost half a million kilometers. The batteries in these cars are designed to last trouble free. Let's talk other stuff now, such as the electric motor driving the rear wheels. Now typically with electric motors, I'll tell potential car buyers don't even worry about it, because unless the car's making a clunking noise, or perhaps a loud whining noise, or the car's been to Uranus and back, electric motors, they'll go for a million kilometers trouble free. Don't even worry about it. Next things to look for are upper control arm failure, wheel alignment that's out, and of course, uneven tire wear. Let's start with the obvious thing, tire wear. This one's easy. You just take a look at the tires and look for the general tire wear. If it's uneven, it could be a sign that the wheel alignment's out or something more obvious. If you're looking to buy a Tesla Model 3 and the tires are running down like these ones are almost worn out, you're going to be in for a fair amount of change because tires on these aren't cheap. Something else to keep in mind. Another thing that fails is the upper control arms. These things right here. Now this is a fairly common fault with Tesla Model 3s. The good news is, is that Tesla will replace this under warranty and sometimes even out of warranty just as a goodwill gesture. But do ask the seller if that's been done yet or not, chances are it's gonna have to be done in the future. The easy way to check is take the car somewhere quiet and drive it over somewhere bumpy. And if it starts making squelching noises like this, then you know it's gonna need its upper control arms replaced. That brings me to my next point, which is the warranty on this vehicle. Now, as new, these cars came with a four year, 80,000 kilometer warranty on all the moving bits and an eight year, 160,000 kilometer warranty on the battery and the drive unit. And the good news is, is that warranty or what's left of it is transferable to you the new owner. Let us talk charging now, because the last thing you want is to buy a secondhand Tesla Model 3 only to find out you've got nowhere to charge it. So yeah, do ask the seller if it comes with a charger, because if you have to buy one, for example, the Tesla mobile charger is 600 bucks, which isn't actually a bad deal. And I've got one myself and they're really handy. But if you want to go the next step up, what I'd recommend doing is doing what I did, 
get yourself an Evnex E2 charger. This is the one installed in my garage wall. It's got a lot more functionality than the Tesla charger, a lot more programmability as well. Plus, you can also connect it to your solar array if you want to get solar panels on your roof one day. It's all integrated and of course, it's designed and built right here in New Zealand. If you go with the Evnex E2 charger, you won't look back. But what about road trips, you might be asking? Well, for that, you've got the Tesla Supercharger Network. And if you're looking at buying a used Tesla, then you already know about this. It covers a fair amount in New Zealand. Question is, though, how fast does a used Tesla charge? When new, these cars charge at a very impressive speed, up to 170 kilowatts, which for its price point, that is a very fast charging speed. But that was many years ago, many kilometers ago. So what I'm going to do now is take this to a Tesla supercharger, plug it in and see if it still charges fairly fast for its age. Admittedly, this is a fairly primitive test, but any little bit of information you can get is going to help you make a purchasing decision. Plus, if you're going to spend $45,000, you're going to want to know if it rapid charges, right? And while we're talking charging, let me give you an option to save a little bit of money and save the environment. And that is to join Ecotricity, which is an electricity provider that makes these videos possible. It is New Zealand's only climate positive certified electricity provider. It's not just clean power, it's climate positive power, which means by joining Ecotricity, you're effectively helping to turn back the clock on climate change. It does sound too good to be true, but it's very real and it's Toy2 certified, so you know it's good. I use them and I'm a tightwad, so that's a pretty good endorsement. Plus, it's really affordable because it's only from wind, hydro and solar sources. No coal plants, no gas plants, nothing dirty, just simple, clean wind, hydro and solar. It's brilliant. Plus, if you join the EcoSaver plan, it's the one I'm on, then a full charge for this car, like a total charge, a week's worth of motoring, 10 bucks. 10 bucks! Plus, I get off-peak rates every weekday, plus all weekend, every weekend. Why wouldn't you sign up at ecotricity.co.nz? But be warned, once you go climate positive, you'll become really, really smug because it feels so good. All right, and here is the supercharger network, and I've got it all to myself. Let's reverse in. Check the charging speed. Okay, the car's plugged in. Let's go and check the dashboard and see how quick it's charging. Can we get over 100 kilowatts? And when I started, it was charging at about 50 kilowatts. Now it's slowed down to 39 kilowatts. And part of the reason is because it's kind of cold today and the battery hasn't been preconditioned. It hasn't been driven much. What I'd like to do though, is drive it around for a bit, precondition the battery, and then plug it in and see what difference that makes. It goes without saying that you should take the car on the motorway as well to see how it tracks, how it handles, see if it wallows around, see if the alignment's straight. The balancing, the alignment on the wheels is absolutely perfect. You just aim it in a straight line, it just keeps on going. That is perfect. But while we're on the motorway, it's a good chance to also test the autopilot. Just make sure everything's working. Gosh, these things drive very well. I drive so many electric cars for work, I review so many different cars that I forget how good the Model 3 really is. It's just a well-designed, well-engineered car. Other stuff you're going to want to check, of course, is the usual stuff. Check the glass. Make sure that there's no stone chips in the window. Make sure that there's no fogging headlights and fogging cameras. Make sure that the wireless phone charging works on both docks. Make sure the USB charging works. Make sure all the speakers work. This is usual stuff. This is not relevant just to electric cars. Just check everything. As dirty and rough as this example is, it is driving as new. It's a bit of a cliche, it drives like it's new, but this really does drive like it's rolled off the production line. The dog here does tarnish the image somewhat, but otherwise it drives excellently. In the meantime, I'm gonna take this car up and down the motorway a bit, try and drain the battery down a little, and then I'll precondition it on the way to the charger. We'll plug it in and see what difference that makes. All right, I have drained the battery down hard. We're at 15% now, so this should charge a little bit quicker. Plus the battery's been preconditioned. This will be interesting. Let's see what the difference is. Look at this, what a difference. 129 kilowatts, 950 kilometers an hour this thing's charging at right now. Can you believe that? For a car that's around 45 grand in value, that charges at 130 kilowatts. Unbelievable. Very impressive. Battery in this car looks absolutely fine. Sweet. Anyway, while this thing's charging, let me talk about the next potential issue you should keep in mind if you're looking at buying a used Tesla Model 3, and that is where do you get it fixed if something goes wrong? There are only four official Tesla service centers. There's two in Auckland, one in Wellington, one in Christchurch. There are a number of affiliated places that will do Tesla work on their behalf, but it's not gonna be as easy as it would, say, servicing a Toyota or a Suzuki. 
With a Tesla, you are a little bit more limited with places to fix it, which could be an issue, and you must keep this in mind if you live somewhere rural or in Gore or Greymouth. Next thing to check is water damage. Now, while the motor and the battery in these cars are sealed units, Water, well, it's a cheeky sausage. You submerge it long enough, water will find its way in. And water damage to the motor or the battery is not covered under warranty. So let's look at some telltale signs. So some obvious warning signs. Look for traces of mold in the carpet or on the upholstery, in particular the headrests. That's a giveaway. If there's mold on the headrests or mold on the surfaces. Another thing to look for is water damage in the boot. Look underneath everything, see if you can find any traces of water damage or lime scale. Everything's nice and dry in here. Other things to look for are water damage or evidence of water in the tail lights. That's a giveaway that it's been submerged. Same on the front. Also look at the lens covers on the cameras. Are they fogged up? This one's dry. Basic stuff that you'd look for in any car. No evidence of water in these headlights, that's good. Also, obviously, look in the wheel arches. Do you see any traces of sediment? If you do, that is a warning sign. You basically just use common sense. Look for evidence of sediment. Look for mud residue. Look for salt scale. Anything like that that gives you a clue that this car has been in the drink. Basically, have a smell. If it's moister than an oyster, run away. Other stuff worth looking at while we're outside is wear and tear. For example, the doors. Does it click when you open the door? This can happen when cars get high mileage. The doors start clicking. It's not a catastrophic fault, but it just is a sign that the car's getting old. Other stuff, does the boot open easily or is it sluggish? This one's great. Other things to look for is paint damage on the sills. Sometimes after years and years and many kilometers, the paint here can peel off if you don't have mud guards. Check there. This one looks all right, despite the fact it's covered in mud. Other things to check, common sense stuff, like making sure the window doesn't flop around. This one's good, this is rigid. And also, gosh it's windy, check to make sure the window seals are good. If you've got time, blast it with the hose. And of course, check the rubber seals themselves. These ones are good, they're not split or cracked. Of course, replacing these isn't a hassle, but it's just money you don't want to spend. And one last thing to check is, ask the owner if it's a New Zealand new Tesla or a grey market Tesla. And there's nothing potentially wrong with buying a grey market vehicle if you've got a great bargain that you've got your eyes on, but you won't have any official Tesla support. And you may even have a non-standard charging port on the side. And all of this is fixable, it's upgradable, but it does cost money. But if you've got a real bargain, you don't mind a bit of a challenge, then go for it. And don't worry if all of the information in this video is a little bit daunting because you can just make an appointment with the Tesla Service Center, take a used Tesla in there, and they'll check it over for you. And there you have it. That's the basics of what to look for when choosing a used Tesla Model 3. Now, to be fair, this video was always going to be a bit of a challenge because while some users drive their Tesla Model 3s just like cars, treat them just like the cars they are, Others treat their Tesla cars more like a religion. They're very passionate about these vehicles, which means that no matter how much stuff I cover, I'll never cover enough to keep everyone happy. That's why I've just stuck to the basics. I haven't covered things like battery chemistry differences or power output of the motor, depending on the year, or how many speakers it has, depending on the model. I've just kept to the basics of what's likely to go wrong and what's likely to go right. I should also point out that while some Tesla vehicles do have problems, they do tend to be exaggerated a little bit on social media. The vast majority of Tesla owners with Model 3s have quite boring existences with cars that just go and go and go, which means that if you follow the tips I've outlined in this video, chances are you're likely to find a decent used Tesla Model 3 that will give you many, many years of trouble-free, hassle-free, emission-free, fuel-free motoring.